Bitcoin is looking like it wants to make a new all-time high pretty soon. Uh, we've got one Fed on deck today, so a lot less than yesterday. The Money Market Fund report came out yesterday. I'm going to go over that as well. I'm also going to bring a new play to the channel, so stick around for that. I'll be about midway through the show today. We're going to talk about a brand new play that I charted yesterday, and I'm very, very excited about this one, actually. So first of all, let's start off with the Money Market Funds. You can see that as of yesterday, there's six trillion, forty-eight billion dollars in money market funds it has grown over 10 billion dollars since last week and it has grown over you know 47 billion dollars since the beginning of may so this is actually a really good sign for the continuation of the bull run because it means that there are six trillion dollars on the sidelines just waiting to be injected into the market at the right time so this is great when this number starts falling that's when we'll see the a run up in the market and then when it stops falling and starts growing again we might start seeing that be, would be a time when people start getting fearful of the market once more but for now um we are in a bull run this this number is growing meaning they're preparing for a dip to buy that thing uh, so keep your eyes on this specific chart here or not this chart but this report here to see how the money market funds are reacting to the overall market. This is a great uh, signal for just how much money is sitting waiting to be deployed. Uh, so anyways, the economic market, uh, the economic calendar for the day, we've got US leading economic indicators coming out today. It's probably, I'll probably already able to find this somewhere. It'll come, it'll populate on this later today. It's not really affecting me so much, so I'm not going to go looking for it. And then we've got Christopher Waller, Fed Governor, speaking here at uh, 10, 15 a.m. Eastern Time. And that's all we've got. Uh, it's also OPEX day, so options are going to be extra volatile today. So, so pay attention to those as well. So let's get right into Bitcoin here. We can see that Bitcoin is flagging right here. We are getting a bull flag printing right here. That is very bullish right there with that look. As long as it holds above this neckline right here, which right now is sitting down at uh, 64,100, as long as it holds above that, we are still in a bullish uptrend off of this inverse head and shoulders that I've been pointing out for a little while here. Let's take a look at the SMAs. How are those looking? We're above the 50. Great. Oops. We are above the 5, the 20, and the 50. The 5 crossed up over the 20 yesterday. That is a good sign. We've got movement on this thing. Honestly, this could easily easily go take us to new all-time highs if it can hold here and get outside of this descending channel here. Uh, I think that we could very likely be looking at new all-time highs before very long at all, given the bullish patterns within bullish patterns that we're looking at right now. We also have this pretty sweet squeeze going on right now, as you can see at the top of the chart. Let's go ahead and turn on the top Bollinger Band, see how far away they, well, let's do the bull. Let's do the whole thing. Bollinger Band, where are we? We're right at the top, so we might be end up coming back down a little bit maybe a little bit, give it a little breathing room and then start launching off of that again. We'll see. Or maybe we'll just lean right into it like we've done in the past before, like back here when we ran up last February and we just hit it. We just kept going. Maybe we'll see that. Bitcoin likes to do that sometimes. That would be crazy. So keep your eyes on that. It looks like Bitcoin wants to potentially make a new all-time high at some point soon. And that means that the miners are also likely to see uh, some pretty big moves coming in very soon here off of that movement of Bitcoin if that comes through. Uh, uh, now, of course, on the downside, we could come as low as 60, 63,000 before seeing a bounce if it decides to break down here. We could come as low as 63,000 pretty easily if this bullish pattern does not play out. So that's also something to be aware of. Okay, now let's take a look at this new play I've got here. This is Adobe. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with Adobe, at least with their products. I'm very familiar with them with a the design background. I use them basically every single day. Uh, they are a staple in a lot of universities and companies. They are the design standard in that industry. Uh, they're not really going anywhere. They're also a SaaS business. They recently, in the last couple of years, much to the frustration of people like myself that use the product all the time, they changed over to a subscription-based model, which has honestly seen their stock get real big real fast. Um, so anyways, Anyone that's been with us for a while here knows exactly what I'm about to say about this chart. Look at that cup and handle. This is on the weekly, by the way. So when this thing goes, it's going to go off big. Just for comparison, let me go back to this and let's change it to the SPY. Just for comparison, we're going to go to the weekly. 
Let me get zoomed way, way out. What looks familiar here on the spy compared to Adobe? Is it this little space right here? Does that look super, super familiar to what we're looking at on Adobe right now? Big old cup, big old handle. What came next after we did that big old cup and handle? Oh, I don't know. Just something like a how much percent move? A 30% move on the spy. Now, that's pretty amazing. Now, if we saw a similar type of move, which I think this one will be a little bit bigger. Um, if we saw a similar type of move, though, whoops, I mean, oh, yeah, there we go. Because this right here is 40%. So it's going to move more than that. It's going to move about 80, somewhere around here. That could take us up to, up to like $800 pretty easily, right? Because let's see, how, how much bigger was that move than this? Right, it was 11, that was a 3x move off of that. Let's see, I think it's the same as the bottom to this, right? Yeah, so it should be the same as the bottom of the cup to the brim. So if we did the bottom of the cup to the brim, we'd be looking at about 130% from the bottom of this cup to the brim. So if we did that move right now, 130%. Now I'm not saying we're gonna do that, but it's, I'm just saying it's possible, 130% would take us doo -doo, to, wait, I can't even see it. I can't even see it, but it's well over $1,000. Let's go, let's go even bigger, 130%. $1,063. Can you believe in a potential $1,063 Adobe? I don't necessarily think it's gonna do that. I do think we'll see a new all-time high. We might, you know, tap 800, maybe 850, something like that. I'd be looking to, Go anywhere between here and honestly, anywhere between 800 and 900 is where I would be looking. Now, this is a weekly chart. This isn't going to happen tomorrow. Okay. Also, never front run these things. Okay. Never front run these things. It hasn't broken yet. This thing could absolutely break down. Okay. So, this is going to be the bearish side of this potential trade. If this does not play out as a cup and handle, we're looking at a head and shoulders. We've got a shoulder, head, and a potential shoulder forming right here. It's also slanted. It's also slanted, which means that the neckline is way down here. So we would get a move, something like from here to here, 36%. And that would be from this neckline, 36%. Could come all the way down to $288. Okay, that's why we don't front run. That's why we never, never front run. We wait for the break. We wait for the confirmation. Because if you don't wait for the confirmation, guess what's going to happen? It's going to come all the way down to $288. You're going to be on here commenting about how I'm giving you these terrible plays, which I'm not doing, by the way. So keep an eye for the break. Do not front run this thing. Of course, it's not financial advice, not a suggestion to buy, sell, hold any asset whatsoever. Do whatever you want. Lose your money if you're going to lose it. But me personally, I'm going to be waiting for the break. And the reason I'm waiting for the break is because this little formation right here scares me. This one right here, that is an ascending channel. Ascending channels tend to break to the downside. We are in an aggressive descending channel right now. It is a handle. It is definitely a handle, but handles need to break. If they don't break, then the pattern doesn't happen. If the pattern doesn't happen, you lose money. So we're waiting for this to break out. Personally, I won't be doing anything until it gets over $506.45. So I'm watching it. You got you to gotta be aware of these plays early because if you come back in three months from now and you see that it's up at $650, $700, you'll feel like it's too late. Uh, at that point, uh, I, I don't think it would be, but you'll definitely feel like it is uh, and you won't get in much like some other charts that I could show you that I'm not going to go into right now where I've charted them. I forgot about them. <laughs> I came back later and they were way up there uh, where I thought they originally would go. So for this one, what are we looking for? We're looking for this descending channel that is currently in to break to the upside. I personally am looking for $506.45 to break above that and confirm above that. Once it gets above that, I'm looking for a pretty quick move up to about 563, where I'm expecting it to encounter top between 563 and 638. Once it clears this top here, once it clears that top, we're, we're running for the all-time high over here at $702. That's where, where we will run into our next level of uh, resistance is at that area and then from there we may find ourselves kind of slowly drifting up towards that $800 level. That's assuming that this doesn't become a head and shoulders and we find ourselves at $288 90 days from now. So that is something to be aware of. 
when this thing moves, it's going to move big. It's going to move big one direction or the other. I think we are leaning bullish just given the cycle of everything and where the chart currently is sitting. But of course, always, always, always be patient. Wait for confirmation. Do not front run things. You have to wait for the confirmation. Otherwise, you will get wrecked. Anyways, that's the big play right now. This thing could be huge. Uh, I mean, if we just look at the spy here, right? We came all the way down. And then it was, honestly, this one was insane. It was a, just a complete rocket from 408 all the way back up to previous all-time highs at 480. Then we ran into a little bit of resistance at that 480 level right here. You know, right at this line, we ran into a little bit of resistance there for like, you know, four or five days. And then we just took off absolutely running from there up to the 520s. Uh, will that be the same play on Adobe? I don't know. I can't say for sure. But I am expecting to run into a little bit of resistance here at the 505 range, again at the 563 range, up until potentially, uh, you know, 638. And then again at 700, I'd be expecting to run into some resistance that could, you know, cause you know me to sweat a little bit if I'm in this play. Now, I am watching this. I am looking to get into this thing, and I'm very interested in it. I am not in it currently, and I will not be in it until it shows confirmation of the cup and handle. But bringing that to you ahead of time so that you can put it on your watch list, so you can see what it does, chart it, pay attention to it, and just see what happens. You don't necessarily need to play it. Just you know, be aware of it. See if the cup and handle plays out. If it plays out, it can be a fun you know, charting experience, even if you don't do anything with it. Uh, but that is Adobe. Okay, now let's look at some plays we haven't looked at in a little while. So this one is ARM. What's going on with ARM here today? It's down point. It's down 2% today from the cycle high. It is down about 6%. I am looking for it to try to come back to this 110 level. I did make some nice money on this run up here once it broke $100 up to that 115 range where I have my green line here. I am expecting it to come back to this yellow line here. I changed this now to the 13 EMA, so it's not the 20 right now, it is the 13. I am looking for price to come back to the 13. I think they will intersect somewhere around 110, maybe 109, potentially. That's what I'm looking for. If you notice that right now, so we've got the 50, which is the orange here, that is acting as resistance. We've got the 13 here, which I'm thinking is likely going to be acting as support. It's getting trapped between these two SMAs right now. If we turn on the Bollinger Bands, I bet you it's pretty far away from both. Let's turn them on, turn it on. We're actually pretty close to the top. All right, not bad. So I'm looking for this to start to squeeze. The Bollinger Bands, I'm looking for that to compress. I'm looking for it to get kind of stuck between the 13 and the 50 for a little while, maybe a week, maybe a couple of days. And then I'll look for it to either break back down and come and test the bottom of the Bollinger Band before going back up again, or I'd be looking for it to blast into the top and kind of just run like it did something back here, right, on um, in February, where it like ran into it and just kept running above it, above it, above it until eventually coming back into it. Or, or, or back here in uh, November, where it just kind of hit the top and just rode the top of it up, like just slowly grinding up for months. I'd be looking for something like that once I see a breakout on this. So actually, I'm not doing anything right now with this. I'm just sitting on my hands. I'm waiting for it to come back down, test the 13, see what it does, see if it decides it wants to go up or down from there. But that's really all we can do right now. It's a kind of a waiting game for a lot of these. Uh, let's also take a look at Palantir. Palantir is actually up a lot today. That's not great for me. Uh, I would like to see that come down a little bit. I did sell a, uh, a cash, uh, a covered call on this thing for $24. Or was it $23.50? It was either $23.50 or $24. Now there is a potential double bottom right here. And if it crosses above 2307, then that would uh, confirm the double bottom. And I would see price likely come back into like $25 range, which would end up seeing me uh, selling those shares, which is okay. I'll just sell another uh, covered call at 25 for like $26 or something like that. And then sell a put somewhere, you know, around 22, $23 again. That's all I'd do in that situation. I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I am seeing an ascending channel that could break to the downside. It is fairly aggressive. If it breaks underneath this line right here, I'd be looking for it to come all the way back down and form possibly a triple bottom. We'll see. On that, that's Palantir. Now let's wrap things up with some miners. What's going on with Bit Farms today? We're up 0.57%. Even though, let's take a look. How much was Bitcoin up today? It's up 7% today. And BitFarms is only up half a percent after that awesome like presentation for Q1. That's that's just disappointing, to be honest. Uh, I want to see BitFarms break this line. It's got to break this green line. Right now, it is getting 
suppressed pretty harshly. Uh, so I think once we get above this green line, we're going to see a very quick move up to $2. $2, we might vacillate a little bit, find some resistance, and then just rock it up to $2.50. I'm looking for a $2.50 move pretty, pretty quickly here. Oh, I should also note that I have um, set some sell orders, at least on this one for, uh, I'm thinking for the July rally, I set a sell order a little bit above $5, like just under $5.50 to sell about 25% of my BitFarms shares here sometime in the next three months, if it gets there, if it gets there. Uh, and that would represent a good portion of my cost basis, you know, and just make my trade basically risk-free from there on. So that is going on there with that. I've also done that with BitDigital and CleanSpark. I've set a really high uh, target for the summer rally, just as a sell order in case it gets up there, I would be very happy selling some shares. Not all, of course, but some. What's BitDigital doing? BitDigital is flat on the day. Are you serious? Really? That sucks. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of getting stuck. Same thing with BitDigital. It's just getting absolutely suppressed into this range here. There is a bit of an inverse head and shoulders showing up on BitDigital down here with a neckline here. That would be something like, not that, well, maybe that. Something like this green line here. All right. Yeah, it's this ascending channel. Just follow this ascending channel. It breaks this ascending channel. It's going to go off up to three bucks pretty quick. So that's something to watch out for on BitDigital. Uh, I've also got some other news on BitDigital that I'll talk about either in another video later today or tomorrow. Uh, that's very interesting and actually kind of plays into some of the memes, meme stock craze that's going on right now. And it might actually affect BitDigital as well. So we'll talk about that. Hopefully it doesn't happen before I get a chance to get around to that. Uh, let's take a look at CleanSpark. CleanSpark is actually down today, 0.36%. We're at $16.42. We're sort of just getting stuck here in this zone between $18 and $15 right now. Of course, when this thing breaks, it's going to make a nice big, big break. And it's going to be very cool. Once we get above this 50 SMA, honestly, is what I'm looking for, which is 17.43 right now. I really want to see it get above that. And once it gets above that and stays above that, I'd be looking for it to run towards the mid-20s again for T quickly. What's going on with Mara? Mara is up 0.7%. That's good for my calls. Great. I love it. Um, Mara, same sort of thing. We're above all the SMAs right now on Mara. It just needs to hold it and just grind up higher on Mara. It's the format. There's not a lot that I'm looking at in terms of this particular chart. I am seeing higher highs and higher low patterns coming in right now. We do need to see a price above 2107 to get another higher high on this pattern that it is currently forming right in this zone here that it has been doing since since April 16th when it made, met that low we had it, we broke uh, we had a change of character then we had a higher low and a higher low where, where we broke structure then we had a higher low now we need to see a higher high it's got to come in it doesn't come in that's a problem for Mara uh, let's take a look at Riot what's going on with Riot today Riot is up 1% that's also nice i like that hanging out around $10 its price is also looking pretty compressed of late. Let's see, are we squeezing? We're not squeezing, actually. That's surprising. Uh, we're below pretty much all the SMAs except the five-day SMA. We've got the 20 and the 50 kind of colliding with each other. Riot's really got to get above that thing at 1065 to even have a chance to come at the 200. The 200 is now under $12, which is not promising. But but there is uh, a an inverse head and shoulders coming in right here from uh, you know mid mid to late March, then we got mid April, and now we've got early May is another is another shoulder, and that neckline is kind of like this. So basically, we get back above this orange dotted line. This inverse head and shoulders starts to starts to print, and if that inverse head and shoulders prints, we are looking at coming all the way back up to about eighteen dollars on this thing if that happens. So keep your eyes on that as well. Watch for it. Again, we never front run these things. We just wait and see if they happen. And if they start to happen and they start to confirm, once they confirm, then we are looking for that big, big run on these things. Let's take a look at Cypher Warrants. Are those doing okay today? Mm, yeah, up 0.92%. I'm at $1.10. I mean, I'm still up hundreds of dollars on this thing because I was buying in, you know, 80, 90, 80 cents, that range there. I would like to see it get above this green line here. I don't like that. It's still just hanging out in like this pennant range here. I really want to see this thing get out. Let's see what the underlying underlyings are doing. It's down 1.47%. That sucks. Uh, so for this one, I did change my, my sell order. I originally had it at 153. I actually decided to change it and I set it up over $2. I set it around the high here, around 223 is where I set 
my latest sell order. And I changed it from that because I'm looking at this July rally here and I'm looking at all this really compressed price action. And I'm thinking that July could be, could be a pretty impressive run for this thing potentially. So last time for the summer, the summer run was a run here started in May in 2023 and it went up 280%. If we were to do the same thing right now, I don't think we will do 280%, but if we were to, to do the same thing right now, it's, it even goes way beyond that, right? So honestly, just from, if we do even half the run from last summer, that would be a 100% move from where we currently are, which would take us very easily to my $2.23 mark. Now, if it did the 280%, we got to zoom way, way out for that. I don't think it's going to do that. Keep that in mind. I really don't think it's going to, but if it's going to do 280%, that would take us all the way up to $4.12. That would be pretty awesome. That would be several thousand dollars return for me. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, I think 223 is maybe a good marker. I think maybe, maybe if I'm super, super lucky, maybe 264, maybe 270 on this thing potentially. Watch it just go to $7 or something crazy now that I said that. But it doesn't matter. I'll be out uh, around two something on this thing uh, when it happens. So that is pretty exciting. I'm pretty. Uh, happy to see that happen if it does happen. So I'm watching for that as well. And of course, I would also be pretty happy to pick up another few hundred, maybe even another thousand shares if it dips back below $1 before then. So I'm watching for that as well as I'm watching the warrants. Uh, so that is all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, and subscribe and have a profitable day.